Thank you so much for joining us, Julie. Everyone, I'd like to welcome on Julie Burke, and she is an amazing lady. And also, she does affiliate marketing, she does network marketing, and she teaches marketing in a unique way um, that she teaches attraction marketing. So, it's instead of going to chase your friends and family, it's really getting into the space of having the people that you want come to you. Welcome, Julie. Hi, thank you so, ha so much for having me, Lisa. It's You're great welcome. to be on. Hi, everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about you and how you get started in Network Marty? Sure. Okay, so um, I, I would say I found Network Marketing four years ago. So prior to Network Marketing, um, I w graduated high school early and had no idea what I was going to do, right? I didn't have the aspirations of, oh, I'm going to go to like this big Ivy League college. I really didn't know. And my dad was an entrepreneur. And um, I also saw him have a successful business and lose it overnight. Okay. And so I, um, I just want to start making money, to be honest. Um, you know, my family went through some struggles and I was still living at home and um, just wanted my own money. So I eventually just, I went right out into the real world. I went to a community college and um, after about five years of working in the real world and commuting and um, having nasty, a nasty boss, I realized that um, corporate wasn't the place for me. I, I, I couldn't do it. I eventually did go to uh, university. I was doing full-time work during the day, full-time school at night to get my bachelor's degree in business, and had a job on the weekends. So I was really busy. I know a little bit about hustling. And, and so um, at 22 years old, I left my corporate position made really good money, but was not happy. And what I did was open a franchise. Mm -hmm. So I bought three franchise locations and thought that that was, you know, my ticket to freedom. And lo and behold, I learned that it is not. I was there 24 seven. I was there, I couldn't take my first vacation. I remember it was about four years until I was able to take my first trip away from the stores. Um, I had a partner, but they were not active in terms of helping out at the business. They were a silent partner. And so I had that for about eight years and then um, sold it to start a family. You know, I was 32 years old. We were ready and actually I was pregnant. And um, so yeah, about uh, eight, nine years later, sold it and then became a stay at home mom. And, and we were able to profit off the stores, which was awesome. And um, so I was able to stay at home and, and that's how what happened was then I'm at home and I, I go, you go from working six, seven days a week, 60, 70 hours a week to then just sitting behind four walls. And as a mom, I'm like, I kind of felt like I lost a, a, a piece of myself in terms of, I still wanted to be able to do something, even though I love being at home with him. Yeah. So I started in direct sales and then I started seeing that I was gone all the time doing home parties. Um, literally high-fiving my husband as he was walking in from work and I was like, all right, see you later because most home parties are nights and weekends, right? right. And I'm like, okay, I didn't sign up for this. I, even though I was successful, I was like top the sales unit in that di division. I'm like, well, this isn't for me. So I started dabbling on uh, meetup.com. Mm -hmm. I was on a women entrepreneur group and I just started looking to see what other women were doing in their introduction. And I actually clicked on the organizer of the group and it was the last person I was going to click on before I was going to leave. And I got the couple of nuggets that she said about her network marketing business. And I didn't even know what network marketing was at the time. And I reached out to her and I hunted her down and basically she came over, she sat down with me. Um, she lived five minutes from my mom's house. It was so crazy how this all happened. And I just started on the product and I fell in love with it. And then I, I fell in love with the business model. Uh -huh. I said, okay, I can do this because I could do this from my cell phone and my computer or my laptop. And I don't have to do home parties if I don't want to do home parties. And that's actually what we're going to talk about today is the difference of 
a lot of people still are in that mindset where, you know, they feel like they have to invite people into their house. It might mm -hmm. not be their preference, actually. You know, right. they may not feel like they have time for that. Um, they not, may not feel like they turn the Super Bowl party into an opportunity meeting. Like, did they surprise people or did they tell them ahead of time? That type yeah. of thing. Um, so how did you really get into attraction marketing and how that differed from, you know, seeing your husband come in, high-fiving him, like, bye, honey, I'm going to go do this meeting, to mm -hmm. primarily building your business online? Yeah, well, okay, so in the beginning, um, it wasn't that I didn't believe in the technique of doing home parties and creating a list and cold calling, okay? I'm just saying that that wasn't for me, and the reason was I just came from direct sales, and I already had the home party for that company with my friends and family, mm -hmm. right? And so now I'm going to have another home party with now this different product, it, it just, it wasn't something that I wanted. And then cold calling is just not in my blood. I just, I don't like it. And, um, and I never made a list just because things just started taking off. And the reason they started taking off was when I went on my product and I realized very quickly that I love this product, I went to Facebook and I actually just got a Facebook account four years ago. Wow. And I had a hundred and I remember it was like 110, 115 friends. And I posted something about 12 days into my product, and I never said the product name. I never even referenced what it was. And I had so many people reach out to me, and all I did was create curiosity. And I had 45 people ask me what I was doing, and I went, okay, there's something to Facebook. Mm -hmm. I needed to start getting some more friends on Facebook. And so I have different strategies um, you know, around that. But it was that and then meetup.com and going there and just seeing some local meetup groups. So I did take it offline as well as online. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been recent actually in the last, um, since June of last year that I started really with more of the attraction marketing and branding um, with um, around me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was doing it on my personal page for a really long time, creating curiosity, adding value, showing my personality. Um, you know, I like to have fun. I like to travel. I show my kids. Showing more of a lifestyle. Um, I was not branding my company. Mm -hmm. I was not spamming anything on my feed about my company. I would do some, some transformation posts every now and then. But, you know, you have to really create – your presence mm -hmm. on your, your personal page. Um, but what I did was I started building a fan page to start attracting um, the right type of people to me in regards to building. I was that I now have a coaching business mm -hmm. and um, for network marketers. And so I learned some strategy around the fan page and in regards to really building up my brand and attracting the right type of people to me. And that really has been, it's just made my business flourish. And so through people getting to know me through my fan page, they are now asking me about my network marketing company as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going there to actively prospect my fans. However, there are people unhappy maybe with their network marketing company or their upline or with their comp plan. And so they're saying, hey, who are you with? I'd like to learn more was never my intention to actually do that, right? Mm -hmm. so it was just my intention to go there and add value, mm -hmm. lots and lots of value. And that's what I've done. And then when you add value, people get to know, like, and trust you. It is true. And it's, it is necessary. And you've kind of proven that you don't have to be on every platform. You know, yeah. you don't have to be on Instagram. You don't have to be on Snapchat. You don't have to be on Periscope. Mm -hmm. But you can pick one platform and hang out there and you'll end up attracting the types of people that you want to you. Yep. And Facebook has been my jam. Like that's really it. You know, I've tried, I have a Twitter account. I have Instagram. I have YouTube. I have Pinterest, you know, Pinterest is not a platform. Pinterest is a lead generator. 
Mm-hmm. So a lot of it's it's more about like a like a you know like what you would do with like a Google or something. Like I don't bundle Pinterest in as being like a Facebook um, or an Instagram or Twitter. It's it's very different, and I'm learning a lot of strategies around Pinterest, which is really cool because I feel like it's an untapped place, you know, for my market. Um, and I feel like once I learn it, I can teach it to others as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're right. I just have focused mainly on Facebook. I I have an Instagram account and I will post there. However, I've never gotten any leads off of Instagram. It's just, Mm -hmm. I don't think that you should spread yourself too thin. Like why, why fix something if it's not broken? Mm -hmm. And there's billions of people on Facebook and billions more. The other thing I love about a fan page, love, 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 is you could actually boost your video or boost your blog to a target audience. You cannot mm-hmm. do this on your personal page. You are also limited to 5,000 people on your personal page. Like my fan page, I'm almost to 11,000 followers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's no limit to the people that you can reach. And um, it's so cool. And, and most network marketers don't use that strategy where they actually pay for ads and put their message in front of the face of the exact person that they're trying to attract. Right. One of the things is that it takes getting so crystal clear about yes. who you're trying to draw in. You know, yes. it's different if you're trying to, you know, be the makeup lady to everybody, or if you're trying to be, you know, the health and wellness coach, or right. you're actually trying to get in the front of the face of entrepreneurial minded people, it, those are three different messages. Right, absolutely. So you have to get really clear on your message. Like, who do you want to be? Not only who are you looking to attract, you've got to get clear on who you are. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you like? What do you not like? What do you want to do more of? What do you want to do less? Like, and then also getting clear on who your target audience is. Like, you have to know these things. And so for me, when I was looking to get started, I'm like, okay, um, do I want to go my health and wellness side or do I want to go the entrepreneur side? And when I got really clear, when I sat down and thought about it, I was more passionate about the entrepreneur side and being mm-hmm. that expert. And you guys, for those of you that are listening, you don't have to be a multiple six-figure earner to be labeled an expert. You could do Facebook Live videos one of two ways, or you could deliver content one of two ways. You could do it from, I am an expert, meaning I have gone before you. I'm a step before you, so just take my advice and and apply it. Mm -hmm. Or you could come at it from, this is the journey I want to take you on. I'm very nervous about doing Facebook Live. I'm very new to this fan page, but I'm going to be offering some health and wellness tips for, you know, um, for uh, new mommies, right? So follow Mm -hmm. me here. We're going to be going through this together. And um, you could just take them on a journey. People love being on a journey with you. So don't feel like, well, I haven't created six figures or seven figures in my business yet, so I can't do that. Yes, you can. I Mm -hmm. mean, and so, you know, my target audience, I realized, is um, network marketers. But then I had to dial it in even more. Where are they at in their network marketing profession? Where do they want to be in their network marketing profession? So I'm not just speaking to any network marketer. Mm-hmm. I, like, really laser focused in on, on the, the people that I want to work with. And that okay. I want to talk to me, okay? And so... You have to get crystal clear first on what you want, you desire, and then those you are looking to attract to you. And once I did that, it just boom. The second part of that is I had a fear around doing Facebook Lives because I was nervous about what my peers were going to think. And I was, my ego was holding me back. It was in my own way, right? And so, um, and not just that, just, you know, what do I say? What if I screw up? I mean, all of that. Mm-hmm. So I held myself back for a while from doing them. And when I finally, you know, had a mentor that was able to hold me accountable, it was the best thing that he ever did for me. 
of um, not only you know giving me the strategies on how to build up a fan page and grow it, um, but also I had to be accountable to him. I had to do these flipping videos, right? Right. And so um, I was thinking about myself instead of thinking about the people I was meant to serve. Mm -hmm. And so literally I had to wash it all away and just start and do it. And when I did it, I, I became consistent with it. And I actually did a 30 day challenge to myself. Mm -hmm. do, do a video for 30 days straight. You'll create a habit. And I did it. And so I missed two days. I was on a vacation and I had no reception. I was so mad. <laughs> I had 28 out of 30 days. Um, but I did it and it created a habit. And I started seeing people respond. Yeah. It was like, I told you it was painful. It was like giving birth all over again because you're, you are, there is no one there. Mm -hmm. It's and crickets. Like, it is crickets. And like, I was inviting some people to my fan page, but I'm not going to invite friends and family to a network marketing training tip fan page. And I didn't want to invite the people I knew in my network marketing company because I had the whole fear around what my peers were going to think. So I really wasn't inviting nobody. I had to start from scratch. I was, literally holding my phone and talking to air and I'm like, <laughs> okay, but through the process of being able to boost the video and spending a little bit of money through boosted ad, I was able to get in front of my target audience and test different audiences and things like that. It was all trial and error. And that's how, I mean, I don't know how to say in seven months or a little over, yeah, seven months now, 11,000 followers. It's crazy. And it's mm -hmm. like growing. Now even quicker because it's you know more people are sharing, it's getting bigger, and um, and so it's been really really cool. But it's brought me some really high five figure months. That's great. And in my business, so yeah, it's I, I recommend the fan page for just about anybody, and I call it a fan page. I don't call it a business page. I like calling it you know because this, this is a community that I'm creating for network marketers to come and learn and feel safe and be able to ask questions and I'm not necessarily doing business there. Right? Mm -hmm. so. so you're taking it offline. Basically yep. you're attracting the right person mm -hmm. and you're taking the conversation offline and then onto a call. Are you finding that you're getting any resistance to getting on calls? You know, everything is so like text message and instant message oriented these days and everything are yeah. you getting any resistance of people wanting to talk to you or did you position yourself where people are really you know biting for your time yeah okay good question so um yeah so not at all like totally they they're like really you're going to take a few minutes and talk to me like they cannot believe it it's like they view you as a celebrity and i will tell you right now i'm not trying to create a celebrity brand mm -hmm. um, i know some people Maybe you want all of that, and that's cool. I just want to show up and do my thing. I keep my trainings nice and short and straight to the point. Anyone that knows me knows I'm just really straight to the point. I want to value and respect people's time, as I would want them to value and respect my time. Um, I had to get a little bit more clear on my um, breakthrough session forms that these are for people specifically ready to invest looking for coaching. They'll get, you know, the 15 minute breakthrough session with me. I have a, a whole folder of, of people that fill out the forms, but, um, but even people that will just, you know, instant message me on, you know, um, if they have uh, questions or what network marketing company are you in? Boom. I'm on the phone with them. If they want to learn more about my coaching, boom, I'm on the phone with them. Like I get no resistance. I tell them I do not, do this through Facebook, I will give them the time. If they have 10, 15 minutes, I will jump on the phone with them, but I only have 10, 15 minutes to be able to figure out where they're at in their business and see if I can serve them. I have turned people away in terms of coaching because I don't feel that we're a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not about the money for me. It's about, I got to make sure that I could A, help them, or, or, or B, they're at the point where they need even hire a coach. You know, I might make some other recommendations for them. Um, I've also had a coaching client that actually found out she wasn't really passionate about her product. She was more passionate about something else. And so I could have talked to her about my company 
And I didn't do that. Instead, I hooked her up with another online marketer that I know is really successful in her company, and I linked the two of them together because I care more about her and making her make sure she's happy and she's congruent in what she believes. And and then I wanted to help guide her to someone that I know would help her. So you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have to make right in business. Like mm-hmm. this is business for entrepreneurs. And I want to make sure that I serve people in the right way. Mm-hmm. And so if someone says they don't have the time to get on the phone, I don't spend any more time with them. Yeah. That am I. Yeah. Even if it's for my affiliate marketing company, I have a lot of people ask me about my affiliate marketing company. Same thing. Let's hop on a call. If you're serious about joining, I will give you 15 minutes of my time. Um, and then we'll jump on a, a video chat. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, you were able to build your network marketing income to multiple six figures prior to even doing the fan page. Mm-hmm. What kind of strategies and active park prospecting did you do? Yeah, so a lot of it was, it was both passive and active. So passive was like what I mentioned, um, you know, sharing value. Um, you know, I'm in health and wellness, so it would be offering health and wellness tips, right? And this is, I mean, Facebook Live is very new. We didn't have Facebook Live a couple years ago. So it would be me like maybe taking an article and repurposing some of the content and then throwing in a little bit about, um, if you want to know about more of the protein I take, you know, reach out to me. I'm happy to share more. Um, I recently just did one where I showed my before and after transformation picture after I had uh, my second child, and it was a six-week transformation. And I, I kept the verbiage very short, very straight to the point. Um, and I basically said, if you want to know how I did this in six weeks, drop a comment yes below. Well, yes, 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 yes. If you give people a command that's very simple, they'll do it. Mm-hmm. If you're like, oh, you know, go message me and let me know what you want, blah, blah, blah. I do that too, but they're not as apt. So I gave the, in my post, I said both. Drop a yes below or you can message me. Okay. Everyone just drop the yes below. I had two people private message me out of like the nine or ten. Rest were, yeah. So I've been setting up calls out all week. Mm-hmm. I actually just got three enrollments today from that. So um, I just did this post on Thursday, throwback Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, here's my throwback for the day. I just, just popped up on my Facebook feed. I, this, you know, I'm still shocked about this. So, okay. So I'll just, that's all passive, creating curiosity, not saying your company name. Or it's like, hey, uh, you know, I know we haven't officially met. But I like the way that you're doing blank. I think I have something that would maybe be of interest to you if you're open to taking a look. Like, mm-hmm. that, like that's active, right? Right. Um, that's all I did. For and that's years. really looking for business builders. If you're messaging kind of actively, just you're looking for someone to do this with you and lock arms. Yeah. Or like, let's say I see somebody that made a post of, you know, they're struggling with weight loss. They've tried everything. They're sick of the diets or maybe somebody has no energy. You know, I might reach out to them and I'll actually take my phone. And the coolest thing now through messenger is the voice record. Mm -hmm. I'll actually send them my voice. I won't send a text. I send a voice and I'm like, Hey, listen, I, you know, I see we're friends on Facebook. I know that we don't know each other extremely well. However, I saw this post I can relate to you because I struggled with energy for years and I found something that really helped me. I don't know if it's going to be for you. If you want to talk more, let me know. Like I just leave the ball in the report. I leave it very general, like very laid back. I, I, and you know what? I don't know if it's my voice or what, or the way I do it, the approach, they respond mm-hmm. and they at least say, yeah, I, I'll be happy to take a look. Um, and then I just take the conversation um, offline would be the next step to take it offline. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's so much more of a connection. Yeah. They can hear your voice and mm-hmm. then they can kind of go check out your page and see you. You're not a threat. Your tone yeah. of voice, your influx is not pushy. 
You no, not at all. And that's the other thing. You just now got a follower. Because mm -hmm. then they're like, well, who is this Julie Burke? And what is she talking about? And what is she doing? But then they'll go to my Facebook page, my personal page. They won't be able to see it anywhere because I don't even like my company on my page. It's just This is what I've done. Mm -hmm. I have people to this day from four years later like ask me, what company are you with? Like I cannot figure it out. Mm -hmm. And the point is not to be deceitful. Like, no, it's just because I want to be able to talk to them to help control that conversation so they don't go off and Google my company and the product and all this stuff so they get misinformation. I don't like when people are misinformed. Right. And so I want to be able to take them on the journey mm -hmm. of what this can do for them based off of what they're looking for, really. Because it can be very overwhelming. I know when I first started my company, there's different solutions, right? So I want to make sure that they're getting the right solution for them. Right. That makes sense. And it, it also controls the conversation. Um, yeah. People can go research things online and, you know, as attention getting, you know, some people have negative reviews of things and um, perhaps they've had even a negative experience or something like that. But if that's the first thing they read, then the conversation is really dead in the water. Right. Right. And then you don't hear back from them, you know, and I think that a lot of network marketers are number one. I mean, there, there's, there's different things that I see because now I've been in this business and I've been coaching network marketers for the past six months. And, um, I, I, I see a common thread, you know, first of all, I see, I see a lot of fear around doing the Facebook lives. I see a lot of them. Um, they don't ask for the sale. Basically mm -hmm. they don't want to, they don't want to be salesy, but then, you know, in network marketing, you have to understand that you are selling something and marketing something and you have to be comfortable with it. And, and so part of my existence and what I want to do is help network marketers get comfortable with the process and have them understand that it is not selling that's icky. It's all in the way that you ask for the sale and you sell in your yeah. market. And you have to really sell yourself and market yourself more than anything else because people are going to buy you way more than they're going to even buy your product. Nobody knows what my product tastes like, but they're buying me and they know that I'm here to help them. Right. They, they, have, they feel that for me. Like I, I project that. Right. And so, um, I was, I was that person. I was like, Ooh, I don't want to sell. Like my dad's a wicked salesman and he's always been a wicked salesman. Like he, he loves sales. And I remember when I was a little girl, I was like, ugh. How do you like sales? Like that, you know, because we always have this um, perception of the car salesman, you know, it's not to throw them under the bus, but it's also like the door to door knife person selling the knives and the vacuums and the, the phone books and this and that. And it's like, okay, we have to realize we're in the 21st century. Number one, we have to realize that it's not door to door anymore. We have to realize that there is a way in, that you sell that is um, magnetic mm -hmm. and that um, all you're doing in that process is finding out what they need and if you have the right solution. And if you don't, you let it go mm -hmm. because you're not going to sit there and sell. I'm not going to sit there and sell someone weight loss products. If they're like, you know, 80 pounds, like, yeah, I could sell them the nutrition. I'll, I'll talk to them about the nutrition and boosting up their nutrition, but I'm not going to go and sell them weight loss right. right? on the weight loss. I would mainly take them and, and sell them and, and talk to them about how we could boost up their nutrition. You know, if, if you're, um, I don't know, if you're in a travel company, you're not going to sell, you know, then if they want travel, you're not going to sell them oils, right? No. Like you have to, you have to find out the need first and the pain that they have. And then if you have a solution or not, yeah, my market is not, the, I'm not going to prospect everyone in the world. Right. Like, right. You know what I mean, but everyone is your prospect. And I feel like network marketers, they, they don't really think about this stuff. They just kind of think like, Oh, this is going to get me to freedom. Right. And then, they're not really set realistic expectations up front. And that's really what I want to help them do. Have realistic expectations and then show them how to do this business. Yes, right. one of the industries that's intriguing that way where 
a lot of people, new people coming in kind of feel like they're going to sign up two people and get a seven figure check, you know, residual yeah. somehow. Um, and right. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Yeah. And it's not that way. No, but it's really, I think that is also the job of the enrolling, you know, builder is to create reasonable expectations, you know? Right. And that's not, I feel like that's not done. I feel like that's kind of a missing link. Yeah. That they're not really setting up their people right. They're telling them also, um, you know, go post all about your products on your Facebook. Right. Yeah. And, and it gets um, a lot of companies shut down if they're posting the wrong things, you know, and yeah. guaranteeing things and medical claims and those types of things. So I think all those things are important. But uh, going and expounding upon um, getting someone set up the correct way, it's great to teach people to time block and also follow a system. So, you know, I spied on your website prior to – getting on this call yeah. and you really have it narrowed down to an hour a day. You could end up creating a six figure income. Yeah. I have a, a, a micro course or a mini course, however you want to say it. It's called um, five steps to your multiple six figures and, and empire. And, and really um, because I am a mom, mm -hmm. right. And now I have um, four businesses and home-based business. And, and if you're a mom and you're watching this, you know, <laughs> Um, home based business is great, but it, it can also be the downfall because you've got your kids here, right? So we don't have all the hours in our day. So I really had to time block uh, what I was doing, working either through a nap or, or staying up later and um, maybe, you know, doing some work at night. And so I don't want network marketers to, to feel that they have to put in eight hour days mm -hmm. to learn all this because you guys can absolutely learn as you earn and that's what I did. I, you know, I got started and I brought four people in with me mm -hmm. and when they asked what it was, I got my enrolling sponsor on the phone, three-way call, three-way call, three-way call, three-way call and they all joined because I didn't want to talk to them because I didn't know what to really say and I started realizing the less I said, the better it was. And so I actually built my business through doing um, three-way calls. So I was learning through listening mm -hmm. to the three-way calls. And then I, um, I eventually duplicated that. And then I was doing three-way calls for my team, right, as it started to grow. And so um, I, I, I really did. I built my business in the pockets of my time. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, you know, without giving away all the secrets to your course, what are the, the fundamental things that people need to do within that short period of time that they do have in a day to work this business and succeed? Yeah. Well, you know, picking a social media platform. Yeah. Right. And jumping on and, and being, you know, taking 15 minutes and being active, whether it's first thing in the morning or at night, you know, you could, um, post a couple times during the day and I, I, I have a, a more in-depth, it was actually a three hour webinar training course that I did called social media recruiter that actually takes network marketers through a six step formula that I, I do, I did in the beginning on my personal page. And then the second half of this webinar, I get more into like how to utilize a fan page. It's really cool. And then I'm on it with one of my mentors, Fernie, and, and he starts talking more about attraction marketing. So that course has, it's, it's blown up. It, it's been really, really cool in the testimonials, but um, I talk a little bit about what I did do in there, but really what it is is it's on social media, right? Pick a platform and be visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's a, a, that's a piece of listening to a podcast. Like you have to feed your brain, right? Mm -hmm. So podcast doesn't have to be long, be 15, 20 minutes. Um, doing, you know, if you are an early riser, getting up early and doing those affirmations and setting up your day and, and putting the one thing that either scares you the most on your, your agenda first or the most critical thing that you need to get done first. Like we were talking about focus, like being laser focused, um, before we jumped on the, 
about our podcast here, you have to be laser focused. So what are your, what is your income producing activity, your IPA for that day? Mm -hmm. And every day I tell people, if you could at least just do two to three new reach outs, two to three follow ups and two to three just complimenting people throughout your day. That's really all you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be like, oh, let's pick up the phone and, you know, do 15 cold calls right now. Right. Because yeah. So you'll, you'll, a lot of network marketers feel a little bit overwhelmed by that and like they'll reach burnout. Right. right. Um, so, and then doing like the affirmations, there's, so there's affirmations and affirmations. You could look them both up. You can look up affirmation. It's a little bit different than your affirmations. And, um, and, uh, what else did I have in there? Kind of yeah, I studied app formations actually with uh, Noah, and yeah. it's really just asking a question, you know. Yeah. So it's just the primary difference of of, of what an app, like uh, you know, I am rich, right? right. Like that's an affirmation, right? right. Yeah. Why am I so rich? <laughs> Why am I so rich? Right? Because they're saying like really with the affirmation, you don't. There's a trigger in the brain where you don't quite believe what you're saying at that point or something. So yeah, there's kind of a, an internal BS meter. Yes. But yeah. if you ask a question, then your brain really searches for an answer. Mm -hmm. um, if I asked you why the sky was blue, you'd probably be like, um, I know there's a spectrum, green and yellow. To, you know, there's colors that happen to get, you, you look for an answer. Yeah, you know? it's so, so true. It's so true. So yeah, so I mean, really, it's just... Um, taking those things throughout your day and you, you don't have to do it in an hour straight, like 16 mm -hmm. minutes straight, right? Like you, you chunk it down in the 15 minute little increments. Like you were saying, you time lock throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so really that's what the course is about. Awesome. Is about. Yeah. That sounds great. So you told us earlier that you had three enrollments today, which is yeah. and it's just using the attraction system that we're talking about today. Um, one of them you mentioned was a business builder. So what's the first few things that you always do to get your business builders on the right track? I plug them in immediately to our community, mm -hmm. to our calls. You know, we have morning calls. Um, every morning? Yeah, every morning. We're on a great team. We, we uh, our, our leaders are the, the top income earners in the company. So it's really cool. And they still are very active in building and they're amazing people. And every morning, Monday through Friday, they provide a, a morning call. That's great. So I don't, you know, I, I've done some of the morning calls, but you know, I, uh, and each, each day it's a, a different theme. Mm -hmm. So there's morning calls. We have, uh, zoom calls with our team, like throughout the week. Um, there's a Zoom call uh, like a Tuesday night for prospects to show up. So each leader will rotate on our team to just talk about our company, the product, and the opportunity for 20 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. so I plug them into all the resources. You've got to plug them into all the resources, the events, um, the tools. Um, we have an online university, which is awesome. Like I don't think a lot of network marketing companies have that. Um, our training system is really top notch. And so um, – and then I plug them into our private community as well. Mm -hmm. And I just let them start getting like the experience. And then I get them on the phone and um, I just start walking them through the process of what has helped me uh, build my business. And so the cool thing is that they already know about attraction marketing, this mm -hmm. couple in particular. And that's the thing, like I think more and more network marketers are getting more and more sophisticated and wanting to learn the online systems and attraction marketing and really um, they're looking to get more leads and prospects and they don't want to go out to a mall anymore and prospect or on an airplane or at a bar and they are looking to just have a, a system that they can utilize to uh, maybe get more people to talk to. And so that's really what attraction marketing is and that's how I utilize the system. And um, and, and so it's cool because they already really know how to do this. And they're with another network marketing company as well. And mm -hmm. they're, they're looking to possibly make the shift mm -hmm. here. So um, for those that don't know attraction marketing, what I would do is tell them before you post, 
you tell me and we're going to create your first post together. Mm -hmm. And I walk them through why I don't spam the feed with products, mm -hmm. pictures of products and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I give them realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. That's I think awesome. That's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because um, people will commit and have a mindset around what you create for a vision. So if you tell them, you know what, if you go at this with a four-year mentality of build, 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 um, then it's like your expectations when you go to business school. You know, at the right. four years you apply yourself, you're gonna get a degree. Right, right. I mean, success doesn't happen overnight. Come on, people know this, right? It takes time. and. If you keep the focus on other people and truly wanting to help other people, it, it all comes together. Yeah. You know, and like anytime I ever got a no or I, I literally, I'd be like, next, like seriously. And it wasn't in a rude manner. It was just, I really built posture from the get go. And I think that that's another thing that a lot of people are missing because they're still maybe viewing network marketing for themselves as the hobby or just this extra income and not really as like, this profession that could really, really lead to something where they can then leave corporate America. You know, there's still kind of like that, I don't know, gray area, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I treated it like a business from the beginning. And I had this posture about me of, listen, I already take the product. I love the product. It has done wonders for me and my family. So it's not about me, it's, a, it's about you. If, if you don't want it, I won't sit here and, and I'm not gonna hardcore pressure you into this. I'm here to help you. You reached out to me, you said you wanted to know more about it. However, if you're not serious about your goals, then I'm not gonna be serious about your goals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, you know, holy, you know, they don't expect that from someone It's like, do you know what I mean? Right. And so that's just all in your posture and your belief, your belief about your, your belief about your company, your belief about your product, your belief within yourself. Right. You know? And, um, and that's how I've treated my business. And, and I feel like people respect that. Yeah. You know, and they're like, okay, I know you're not selling me to get into this. And I'm like, no, I'm not, you know, at the end of the day, I still, I do it. I take it. You don't have to come in here and, and do it as a business if you don't want to. You don't have to tell a single soul what you're doing. Just mm -hmm. put the product in your body and experience it for yourself and see if you like it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you take the pressure off, and when you take the pressure off, there's really no resistance mm -hmm. anymore. Make sense? Yeah, right? totally makes sense. Um, how do people find out more about you? Um, how can they find you? Well, my website is createsuccesswithjewel.com. Create Success with Julia was just created in May of last year. And so they can go there and find my blog where I have a lot of, of my video blogs, I should say, and um, my courses and how to reach me. And then also my fan page. And that's just, you go search me at Julie Burke. You'll see my personal page and my fan page. And um, I keep it the same profile picture. That's a tip for everybody. If you're going to build a fan page, you want your same profile picture to be your fan page picture so it's easy for people to find you and see oh, that's a great tip you're like oh wait she's got another page over here with x amount of followers what is this this is her fan page so it's really cool and make it a public figure mm -hmm. regardless if you have zero people in that beginning stage you just always make it a public figure and so um so those are the two ways that they can find me awesome well i've so thank enjoyed you. this interview thank you yeah. so much for having been on today thank you i really really appreciate you asking me and uh, anytime I could give some sort of value or impact somebody I'm, I'm truly honored so thank you so much yeah I know a lot of people are going to get great value from this today